These are the fish that have been the center point of so many cartoon plots in the 90s and early 2000s. The villain would capture the hero and be like, I'm gonna drop you into a pool of piranhas, and every kid would be like, oh my god, you're gonna die for sure if you fall into a pool of piranhas. Piranhas are basically nature's garbage disposal. Well, is that true? Is an encounter with a bunch of piranhas a death sentence, or can you swim with these little blenders around and be perfectly fine? I mean, people will swim right next to a great white shark with Without ever being bitten, so could it be the same thing with piranhas? I am your host, Chaderena, and on today's Life's Biggest Questions, we are going to be asking what would happen if you fell into a pool of piranhas? Okay, let's start off by looking at what a piranha is exactly. Well, it's a fish, duh, and it's carnivorous, duh, and it can only be found in the freshwater regions of South America, mainly in the Amazon rainforest. There are several different species of this fish, 39 to be exact, but 25 of them can be found just in the Amazon. So if you're ever going on a trip through the Amazon rainforest, then you might want to avoid any sort of swimming lessons. If the piranhas don't get you, then it will probably be the crocodiles, or the snakes, or that fish that swims up your pee hole and then lives in your urethra. Is that a real thing? Is that fish real? Do I need to be afraid of that? I know the question on this episode is about piranhas, but please hit up the comment section and let me know if I should be afraid of that thing, because I am. Every piranha has a mouth packed with teeth like sharpened blades. They interlock like the jaws of life to ensure the maximum cutting ability. It's like a bunch of little daggers ripping into your body. And all of these teeth are attached to powerful jaws that pack a punch. The piranha has a bite that has somewhere around 72 pounds of pressure. I don't think I have to tell you, but that is more than enough to rip into your skin and take a piece away. A little fun fact about piranhas, the pounds of pressure delivered in a piranha bite is 30 times heavier than their body weight. They have the most powerful bite of any fish pound for pound. The most famous type of piranha is the red belly piranha. This is the one that you would see in movies and television. They tend to be the most common in the rainforest and some of the most deadly. But to be honest, they are not that large. On average, they sit somewhere around six to eight pounds. That is only two to four kilograms. And that is not what you would expect from something that is known to rip flesh from your bones in just a matter of minutes. And they will reach a maximum size of 50 centimeters, that is somewhere around 20 inches. So how can such a little guy have a reputation of doing so much damage? They have no venom like other small deadly animals, but it's the number of piranhas that make them so effective. Depending on where you encounter these little devils, they can be in schools of up to a thousand fish. That is a lot of little mouths to feed. Coming at you at blazing speed, each one ripping off a little piece of you, you can see why a lot of people are afraid of these creatures. Especially because if you encounter them, you are way out of your element. I don't care if you're the greatest swimmer in the world. You are not going to outswim a piranha. Honestly, you're not going to outswim any fish. I don't know if you have seen a person swim next to a fish, but it's like watching me play basketball against LeBron James. We just seem like different species. And there have been some horrific stories of these freshwater killers coming in and devouring people. One of the most famous of these stories was about a bus crash in Brazil back in 1976. The bus was filled with people. There were 41 people on board. The bus was heading from the town of Manus to the town of Etiquaticaro. And then no one is really sure what happened next. The bus was supposed to make a stop at the ferry terminal to cross the river, but then it ended up in the water. Some people think that the bus driver fell asleep, while other people think that he might have had a stroke or a heart attack. But we will never get the answer because the driver, as well as 39 of the passengers, were killed in the crash. Most of the people drowned, and only two people were able to swim out through windows. Later, when the police arrived, they brought a tow truck to pull the bus from the water, and the scene was horrifying. Many of the bodies had had flesh stripped down to the bone. It was like a horror movie. They didn't know what happened at first, but later they found out that the river was packed with piranhas. Now this may just be an old news story that was altered to make it seem more salacious, but if it's true, it would seem that piranhas have the taste for human flesh. So does that answer your question? If you fell into a pool of piranhas, you would be eaten up so fast that no one would be able to save you. There would only be bones left behind. Well, that's not... Well, it's not exactly that simple. This was one case and there have been many experiments performed on piranhas that have had conflicting results. Even though we have this scary story of all these people getting trapped in this bus and then coming out as skeletons, there have been a lot of people that have been swimming in piranha infested water and come out unharmed. 
I'm sure if you look up a video right now of someone putting a chicken leg into a tank full of piranhas, it will get devoured, but at the same time you can find videos of people sticking their limbs in tanks full of piranhas and nothing happening. There was an experiment performed by marine biologist Dr. Herbert Axelrod. He walked into a pool filled with piranhas and just sat there, and guess what happened? Nothing. They didn't bite him, he didn't die, there wasn't a scratch on him. He was in a massive pool of piranhas and nothing happened. He even wanted to test the levels to see if he could push it a little further. And he brought a massive bloody piece of meat into the pool with him. He took it, he put it on a hook, and then dangled it out in front of the fish and they went crazy. They devoured the bloody meat until there was literally nothing left, but still the doctor was left unharmed. Now, why? is that? Well, there are several factors. First being that the piranhas aren't carnivores. I know I said that they were carnivorous, but I just wanted to confuse you guys a little to build up the hype for the rest of the video. We gotta get the people going. Well, it turns out that these fish are actually omnivores, meaning they will eat pretty much everything. They can definitely be mean, but they will eat a lot of insects and plants as well. So a big living, breathing human falls into the water. It's not as exciting for them as you may think. Animals live in a world where it's constantly life or death. Except for humans and dogs and whatever other animals we keep as pets, creatures need to constantly fight to stay alive, so when the choice of food is between a little defenseless bug or massive human that a piranha has never seen before, they will usually go for the bug. This is easier prey and there is a way lower risk of injury. This is why Dr. Herbert Axelrod entered the water and the piranhas didn't eat him, but they did eat the raw meat that was presented. The fish were able to tell the difference between the living and dead flesh. They knew which one would be an easier meal and they went for that one. Now that being said, in areas where piranhas are present, attacks by them can be quite common. In the city of Palamas, Brazil, there were 190 piranha attacks reported in 2007 in just the first few months of the year. Now this is only the reported cases, so you can expect that the real number is probably triple that. Now how could hundreds of people be getting eaten by piranhas and we don't even know about it? Has it become just so commonplace that it is old news and the news doesn't even care? Well, not even close. It's because these attacks were just small bites, just a little nip. You lose some skin and it probably hurts like hell, and then you have to clean the bite so it doesn't get infected, but no one is dying. Because the way piranhas work is they will send out a scout piranha to do the first bite. It's this guy's job to check if the meal ahead is a threat or not. If the piranha bites down and then gets attacked, the rest of the school will back off because they don't want to get the same treatment. Also, most of these attacks take place in the dry season. This is when there is less food to go around, so the piranha are obviously more aggressive and because the water levels are lower it condenses the amount of piranhas around into a smaller location so you have meaner fish all grouped up in one area that's a good recipe for disaster also if you splash around in the water like you are a struggling animal that will attract the piranhas and make them more aggressive with everything i've just said a few people have died in the past in 2011 2012 2015 there were attacks that killed people it was only one each year and two of them were children and the other one was a drunk guy, so it seems if you're a fully functioning adult, you should be fine, but I'm just saying it can happen even though it is very unlikely. So yes, piranhas can kill you. So what is the final verdict on what if you fell into a pool of piranhas? Well, I think for the most part, you would be fine. You might get bit a couple times, but you should be able to work your way out of the water without any sort of major injury. The only way you could be at a high risk of dying would be if you fell into a pool packed of these deadly fish in the dry season. They were starved and you were a terrible swimmer and splashed around all over the place and were maybe drunk. But if you end up in that situation, it's kinda your fault. What are you doing in prawn infested waters with all these other things going on? All right, guys, that is all we have for you on today's life's biggest questions. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Also, if you have some first-hand experience with piranhas, let me know. I would love to know what your stories are about. And if any of you at home have some ideas for future episodes, write it in the comment sections. We'd love to hear from you guys, and maybe we'll take one of them. I don't know. We'll see. Keep watching, then you'll find out if your thing got chosen. Anyways, that's all we have for you today on Life's Biggest Questions. I am your host, Che Dorena, and I'm here to answer all your questions. Bye.